the time is 6.34. Welcome back. Kellogg's employees are on strike. 1,400 workers at all of the cereal companies' U.S. plants walked off the job yesterday. The union and Kellogg's have been negotiating for more than a year over pay, benefits, and a threat to move work to Mexico. It's unclear how production of its brands like Frosted Flakes, Special K, and Raisin Bran will be affected. A new study finds nearly a third of children with food allergies faced bullying because of it. Children's National Hospital surveyed 121 young people ages 9 to 15. 31 percent reported bullying ranging from verbal teasing to people intentionally putting allergens in their food. The survey also found only 12 percent of parents were aware of any bullying. And last, the big winner of the Katmai National Park Fat Bear Week is none other than 480 Otis. He edged out 151 Walker, receiving more than 51,000 votes. Walker put up a solid effort, though, getting over 44,000 votes. Otis is now a four-time champion, winning. After consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the decision was made to also euthanize the two cubs because they would not be able to provide for themselves in the lead-up to hibernation. So these were cubs born this spring. Um, they would not have been able at their size and at that location, they would have not been able to survive the winter on their own. They would have either starved to death or they would have been eaten by another bear or wolf. Smith said during this time of year, bears are packing on the pounds to fatten up for the winter. The dry summer has forced some of the bears out of the high country, lower to access berries and other food. In Billings this weekend, people can attend a free seminar at Cabela's, hosted by Chuck Bartlebaugh with the Be Bear Aware campaign, where he will dispel myths about the use of bear spray and give people real hands-on experience because you'll want that fast muscle memory during an attack that could happen in seconds. One of the important things to do with bear spray is to have it out. It needs to be attached to your, your strap of your pack or on your belt loop, not in your pack, because you don't have time to get it out of your pack, right? So it's, it's practicing and having that muscle memory so that you don't have to think about what you're doing, you just know what to do. The Bear Aware seminars will happen at the Billings Cabela's free of charge on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., then on Sunday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. In Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. 6.36 now in other headlines. The cost of living in Montana is top of mind issue for many people. Dean's Jane McDonald shares a story for Menace, showing the impact a business owner made on her employees. Affordable housing is a statewide issue, and one store owner addressed the issue to become a part of the solution. And I lost two qualified people from out of the area to bring in here because there was no housing. Chris Gentry is the owner of Madison Foods in Ennis. And it's been really hard as a business to function. We don't have enough room here. <laughs> We're um, expanding here soon. It's just, it's been a challenge. At the moment, Chris says she's about 10 employees short. And with her upcoming expansion, she's looking at 20 workers short. But that didn't stop her from acting in the interest of her store and employees. This summer, I tried to find housing um, for my employees, and I was beat out on two houses that I bid on just by cash. I'm in the grocery business, not the rental business. But her effort didn't stop there. She secured 11 units, and her employees have priority. It's like a diamond in the rough when, when, when I came here. So just to have people who has a great heart and just willing to help other people, that's a great thing. Chris mentioned that the average rent in Ennis is about 1500 a month, and depending on the size of the apartment, she charges her employees around 850 I was grateful. Definitely grateful. You work a little bit harder, you show up every single day to work, ready to go, working hard, and you do what you can to make this store successful. They mean a lot to me. They are what makes me who I am. I hope that I can return that favor to them and help them because it just makes us better in the long run and I can't do this without them. Small steps to solve the housing crisis one worker at a time. In Ennis, Jane McDonald, MTN News. A Montana commission has advanced nine proposals for what the state's two future congressional districts could look like, but not without disagreement between Republicans and Democrats. The Montana Districting and Apportionment Commission met at the state capitol Tuesday to identify which proposed district lines they want to get more public comment on over the next two weeks. 
The two Republican commissioners provided four proposals, while the two Democrats offered five of their own. The Republican plans all focus on a simple north-south line. They say the district should be as geographically compact as possible. That could put Missoula, Kalispell, Helena and Butte on the west, Billings on the east, and Cascade and Gallatin counties along the boundary, possibly split. The Democratic plans are varied, but they generally combine Missoula, Bozeman, Helena, and Butte in one southwestern district in an attempt to make a district that could be competitive between Republican and Democratic candidates. At the end of Tuesday's meeting, Republicans wouldn't agree to move any of those maps forward for further consideration. I think uh, five of the maps that were submitted by my cohorts across the aisle fail the constitutional test of compactness and would be subject to challenge in court, and therefore I cannot in good faith vote yes for the motion. After that, the Democrats declined to support the Republicans' maps. The basic problem with all, all the uh, our colleagues' maps are, are none of them are competitive. They do not uh, meet the uh, state goal of not unduly favoring one party over another and uh, trying to create competitive maps. Commission Chair Maylin Smith broke the ties and moved all nine of the plans forward. In the next few days, the proposals will appear on the Commission website, and the public will be able to give specific comments on each. The Commission is set to hold a public hearing on these maps on October 19th. They could select a tentative final congressional map on October 21st. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Of course, a story we're going to continue to follow here on Montana this morning. Meantime, 20-year-old Washington State woman suffered serious thermal burns between her shoulders and feet Monday afternoon in Yellowstone National Park near Fountain Flat Drive south of Madison Junction. Park officials say the woman was chasing her dog into Maiden's Grave Spring after it had jumped out of the vehicle. The woman's father, who was also in the vehicle, pulled her out and drove her to West Yellowstone. She was treated there, then flown to the burn center at Eastern Idaho Regional Medical Center. The dog was recovered, taken to a vet. Park officials do not know the dog's condition. That incident, of course, remains under investigation. 641, now time for a break. When we come back, a new report from the Department of Health and Human Services shows just how much vaccines have protected people older than 65 during the pandemic. What it says, coming up. But first, let's check in with Nate Burleson for a look at what's happening at 7 o'clock on CBS Mornings. Good morning. Ahead on CBS Mornings, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg strongly denies his company ignores its own research about harmful content. We'll ask the social network's global head of safety if Facebook is putting profits over safety. Also, we'll talk with NASCAR driver Bubba Wallace about making history as the first black driver to win a Cup Series in nearly 60 years. And actress Charlize Theron, she talks with us about her newest role, helping to get COVID vaccines to the world's most vulnerable people. We'll see you at 7.